Ever wondered what would happen if you invested $1,000 in AMC back in 2018? Today, in March 2024, that investment would be worth just $35, a 97% drop from your initial investment. What could have led to such a dramatic decrease? Was it poor financial management, market conditions, or something else entirely? To understand why, we're going to dive into a detailed financial analysis of AMC. Let's start by looking at AMC's revenue. From 2018 to 2023, the company's revenue saw a roller coaster ride. It remained stagnant from 2018 to 2019 with no growth. However, 2020 saw a steep decline with a negative 77% growth rate, largely due to the global pandemic. The good news is that the revenue bounced back in 2021 with a growth rate of 102%, and this upward trajectory continued into 2022 and 2023 with growth rates of 56% and 23% respectively. Despite these positive signs, the 2023 revenue of $4.8 billion is still not up to par with the pre-2020 levels, which peaked at $5.5 billion. This tells us that AMC has yet to fully recover from the impact of the pandemic. Now let's break down the revenue by different segments. In 2023, 56% of the revenue came from admissions, 35% from food and beverages, 3% from advertising, and 6% from other theater activities. This suggests that the majority of AMC's revenue is generated directly from its theaters. Geographically, 77% of the revenue is generated from the United States, with the remaining 23% coming from international markets. This indicates that while AMC has a global presence, its operations are heavily concentrated in the United States. Taking a closer look at the expenses relative to revenue in 2023, rent amounted to 19% of the revenue, film exhibition costs took up 27%, and operating expenses accounted for 35%. The expenses to revenue ratio has been on a declining trend since 2020, which could be a positive sign for AMC. In conclusion, while there has been some growth, it's evident that AMC's revenue is not back to its pre-2020 levels. The company needs to continue its momentum and focus on increasing its revenue while managing its expenses to improve its overall financial health. Now, let's move on to AMC's expenses. To understand the financial health of a company, it's crucial to not only look at the revenue, but also the costs involved. AMC's expenses can be broken down into three main categories, rent, film exhibition, and operating expenses. In 2023, rent accounted for 19% of the revenue, film exhibition gobbled up 27%, and operating expenses took the lion's share with 35%. This structure of expenses isn't unusual for a theater chain like AMC. Renting premium locations for theaters, acquiring rights to exhibit films, and operating costs such as staff salaries, utilities, and maintenance are all part and parcel of this business. However, it's the proportion of these expenses to the revenue that's been a cause for concern. Let's take a trip back in time. In 2020, at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, AMC's expenses to revenue ratio skyrocketed. The theaters were closed but the costs didn't stop. Rent had to be paid, staff had to be compensated, and even though there were no movies being shown, the costs of maintaining the theaters still persisted. This led to a significant drain on AMC's finances pushing the company into a precarious position. Fast forward to 2023, and we see some improvements. The expenses to revenue ratio have been on a downward trend. This is partly due to the reopening of theaters and a resurgence in box office sales. However, it's still not back to the pre-pandemic levels. While the company has been working hard to bring down these costs, the fact remains that the expenses are still eating up a significant portion of the revenue. This has been a major factor behind the decrease in AMC's profitability and its struggling stock price. In a nutshell, AMC's financial performance has been significantly impacted by its high expense structure. While efforts are being made to reduce these costs, the road to recovery seems to be a long one. It's clear that AMC's expenses have been a significant drain on their revenue. Let's now consider AMC's profit margins and assets. In assessing a company's financial health, profit margins and assets are two critical factors. So let's dive in. The net profit margin for AMC in 2023 is minus 8%. This figure has been on a downward trend since 2020 when it stood at a staggering minus 371%. In 2021 and 2022, the net profit margin was minus 52% and minus 26% respectively. 
Although these figures are negative, the consistent reduction in losses is a promising sign. It indicates that AMC is on the right track towards achieving a positive net profit margin, hopefully by 2024. Next, let's look at the net profit, which is another critical measure of profitability. In 2023, AMC's net profit was negative $400 million. Similar to the net profit margin, the net profit has also been decreasing over the years. This again points to an improving financial situation for AMC, with the expectation of positive net profit in 2024. Now let's move on to assets. In 2023, AMC's total assets were $9 billion, slightly down compared to $9.1 billion in 2022. The net assets on the other hand stood at negative $1.8 billion in 2023, an improvement from negative $2.6 billion in 2022. Although these figures are less than ideal, the clear trend of improvement in the net assets is a positive sign for AMC. In conclusion, while AMC's profit margins and assets do paint a somewhat gloomy picture, the consistent improvements over the years provide a glimmer of hope. The negative figures are decreasing, and there is a clear trajectory towards positive values in the near future. Despite the negative figures, there's a clear trend of improvement. How about AMC's liquidity and cash flow? Let's dive in. Now, liquidity is a critical measure of a company's ability to meet its short-term obligations. One common measure here is the current ratio, which is calculated by dividing current assets by current liabilities. For AMC, the current ratio for the year 2023 stands at 0.75, compared to 0.53 in 2022. A ratio less than 1 suggests that AMC's liquidity isn't quite up to scratch yet, indicating potential difficulty in covering its short-term obligations. We also consider the receivable days, which measures how quickly a company collects payment from its customers. For AMC, the receivable days for 2023 is 15, slightly less than 16 in 2022. This decrease indicates that AMC is collecting payments slightly faster than the previous year, a positive sign for cash flow. Now let's talk about cash flow. Cash flow is the net amount of cash and cash equivalents being transferred in and out of a company. A positive cash flow indicates that a company's liquid assets are increasing, enabling it to settle debts, reinvest in its business, return money to shareholders, pay expenses, and provide a buffer against future financial challenges. In 2023, AMC's operating cash flow, the cash generated from its core business operations, stands at negative $0.2 billion. Its free cash flow, the cash a company can generate after required investment to maintain or expand its asset base, is negative $0.4 billion. While these numbers are still negative, they represent an improvement from previous years. This suggests that AMC's cash flow is growing and becoming less negative, which is a hopeful sign. It's important to note that a negative cash flow isn't always a bad thing, as long as the company is investing in its growth. While there's still a way to go, AMC's liquidity and cash flow are clearly improving. And that's a hopeful sign for the future. Finally, let's take a look at AMC's return on equity or ROE through a DuPont analysis. This method breaks down ROE into three components, net profit margin, asset turnover, and equity multiplier. Each of these gives us a unique insight into AMC's financial health. For the year 2023, AMC's ROE was 22%. But don't let that positive figure fool you. The net profit margin stood at negative 8%, and the asset turnover was 0.53. The equity multiplier, which is the ratio of total assets to total equity, was negative 5. Comparing these figures with those of the previous year, 2022, we see some interesting trends. AMC's ROE was higher at 38%. However, again, the net profit margin was negative at negative 26%, and the asset turnover was slightly lower at 0.43. The equity multiplier was also negative, at negative 3.5. What does all this mean? Well, the seemingly positive ROE in both years is in fact a result of negative net profit and negative equity. This can be misleading for investors who may interpret a positive ROE as a sign of good financial performance. While the ROE looks positive, it's important for investors to understand the underlying negative figures. In conclusion, while AMC has shown some signs of improvement, there are still significant financial issues that need to be addressed. The company's revenue has grown, but not enough to offset its substantial expenses. Its negative profit margin and net profit along with low liquidity, highlight the financial challenges it faces. However, the decreasing losses and improving cash flow, do provide a glimmer of hope. 
Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get the latest videos and please comment the companies you want us to analyze next. We will cover them in our upcoming videos.